Welcome back. It is still the run-up, and we're being joined by Dr. Chinwike Oba. He's an economist, a public affairs analyst, and the convener of Amaka Chinwike Oba Foundation. You're welcome to the program. Thank you. So we're looking at agriculture and the non-oil um, export sector of the economy and how it can be boosted to help, you know, uh, reduce the dependence on oil. That is what we're looking at today. Can you give us a background to, you know, what non-oil exports are, actually? Well, first, as the name sounds, as the name implies, it refers to uh, exports, you know, of the nation that is not that is not oil related. So in this instance, you know, Nigeria naturally is a, is a huge exporter of crude oil, or petroleum products as it were, so in raw form. But those other exports that are not oil related, like raw materials, agricultural raw materials, semi-processed goods, cocoa, aluminum, and all that, more, more, more of primary goods that, that are not oil related, uh, non oil exports. Sometimes it could also be um, um, expertise in terms of human capital. But unfortunately, for now, our uh, IT sector is not that yet the, 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 the globe that you can export, like India and all that, like export India. So, non oil export refers to exports from a country that is not oil related. That's what it means. <clears throat> it's it's good it's good that you you clarified the thing to be crude oil and all that because I was wondering when you talk oil and maybe someone out there will also be wondering at some point in Nigeria um, we were exporting palm oil as well until Malaysia came here understudied us and then took over the industry from us so oil could also have been palm oil but now we know the kind of oil that we were talking about so how how do we develop this we know that we have a lot of things apart from crude oil we know we have the gold we know we have the agriculture we, have, we know we have yeah, inside agriculture, there's so much. We had cocoa once uh, that was like ranked number one and the rest of those things. What is lacking? What do we need to do? How do we develop this sector, this non-oil sector, to be a very good um, uh, foreign earner for our country? Let's, let's say so. Well, I, I, think, I think first thing first, it's important also to acknowledge that in the last two years, there has been an improvement in the non-oil uh, sector exports. I think it was uh, early last month, that was October, that uh, the, the chief executive of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council you know, informed us that in the last six months, we exported about $2.60 billion uh, 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 non-oil exports to other countries. You know, when, when you compare that previous year, you see that there's an improvement. But beyond that, outside that, there are still untapped potential that we have. And why we are still lagging behind is that we are still exporting all of primary goods, that is raw materials. And what has happened over the years, I'm happy you mentioned that in the past that we are a huge exporter of palm oil, which led to uh, other countries coming here to take our seed, organize it, and now they are earning so much from that. Even granules, when we have the granules, the pyramid from the north, the cocoa and all that, people are still making a whole lot of money, earnings, foreign earnings from granules, from cocoa and all that. But in our own case, we stopped, you know, the, 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 the developing those sectors because we found oil, which naturally was assumed to be a cheap money. So the problem we have is that of prioritization. Government believes in weak money or cheap money. Hence, the neglect of these other sectors that are the mainstay of our economy, which should have been the mainstay of our economy. Oil is very volatile, as we have seen. We can see the fluctuations in the prices of crude oil from time to time. And we can see also how theft and all that has also reduced our earnings from those sectors. 
But if we're able to develop our non oil sector, one of the things it will help us do is also create enough employment as we had in the past when the test price industries in, in Katna and Kano were boosted. You know, it, it did was so one key problem is government being able to prioritize non oil sector and make the kind of right investments that are, 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 are required. And those kinds of investments are the investments that is just to make the business environment more favorable, access to finance more easy or easier, so that the private sector enterprises that will play in those kinds of sectors will be able to in make investments and be sure that they will contribute to those sectors. Secondly, also, you can find out also what we are expecting more currently is more of raw materials and agricultural products in terms of aluminium, semesis, cashew nuts and all that. If you spot cocoa in raw form, unprocessed, the money you get as forest earning will be very, very minimal. But when you process it just into flour only, the earning increases. And you see what happens when the uh, Western countries, Europe, Oceania, and all that buys our cocoa, and they process it into chocolates. We spend billions of dollars to import those things again to consume it because we do not have the requisite skills and and and, 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 and uh, uh, a technology to process them into those. And so, these are the areas government needs to look, 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 look into. Not just government in terms of that they will begin to do these things. But creating the enabling environment that will also, you know, enhance investment <coughs> in those kinds of areas. Uh, so uh, th there's been I a think, lot I of... think Bio, Bio wants to ask a question. All right, Bio, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. And um, Dr. Bai, it's always nice to get your perspectives. Um, I was just uh, wondering, as, as we head to 2023, um, I'm sure you've looked at the manifestos of the... Uh, some of the political parties, uh, even though we ha I haven't seen that for all of them, we have like we have like I don't know thirteen or fourteen presidential candidates. But are you are you of the view that our presidential candidates are sufficiently aware of the urgent need to diversify the economy from what you've seen from the manifesto? Okay, I think um, there's been a break in that conversation. Old man to himself, God for all. <laughs> <laughs> but that question that Bio asked yeah. you know, was a very good one. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, part of what we're doing here is trying is setting agendas. And mm -hmm. if you if you had gone through, you know, those manifestos by at least the presidential candidates that are in our faces, mm -hmm. those ones that we know mm -hmm. really about, um, who has come out to say anything about anything else about except oil you know um agriculture and these other sectors who has given priority well <laughs> what is coming to my mind is is terrible like, like, like i've heard one talk about abadu for a very long time that's yes. corn so, mm. anyway just that's just by the way but I, I think none of these um presidential candidates has really really talked about agriculture and how, mm -hmm. how to harness what we have, how to exploit what we have to make it a very viable sector. Yes, they've been mentioning it, all, all of them, because they know um, sometimes you say it's, it's um, you, have, you have made more farmers, you have made more people go back into agriculture is not enough mm -hmm. because making more people go back into agriculture is not the same thing as boosting agriculture in its own self. The countries that have food sufficiency do not even have a population of 10% going into agriculture. So if we go back into agriculture and we have like 90% of the people doing agriculture, mm -hmm. that means they lost their jobs. So, they so lost, their, they lost jobs. their jobs and went back into the farm. That doesn't mean that it improves. But if we want to look at it in the, you know, in the manner that we're talking about this morning, they, you wouldn't really say that they lost their jobs. That it, it would mean they left whatever they were doing to create even more jobs. That should have been a very good thing, but I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> they lost their jobs. Bayo is back. <laughs> Bayo, welcome back. Uh, is Dr. Oba also back? Bayo, can you okay. hear us? Bayo. Okay. Do you know what I what I meant by you know 
they would have created even more jobs is if we're talking about agriculture, I mean, in the manner that we're discussing this morning, yeah. it wouldn't be subsistence farming, like farming mm -hmm. at your backyard. Mm -mm. It's going to be farming in a big way, mm -hmm. you know, with all the uh, mechanical things that you need, the yeah. tractors, the big farming tools, and, you know, all the greenhouse and all that. It, 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 if you see what is happening in my imagination <laughs> right now. Well, hey. you've never been a farmer, obviously. I haven't. You think so? <laughs> okay. But okay. Then, this, is, this is how I'm seeing it. Mm. I, I know what you're saying, but this is how I'm seeing it. If we're doing um, commercial agriculture, for instance, mm -hmm. in, a, in an entire village, one person could even be the one to do, to farm all the farmlands that everybody needs and employ, employment will be there. But... If you find that there are so many people and everybody in that village is doing farming, mm -hmm. as in farming in itself, there's a problem because there's a whole value chain uh, in agriculture. The people who can export, actually, is not the farmers that go to the farm. The people who can process it, the people who can do one or two things. There's a very long uh, value chain. But you find all the people... Uh, in quote, getting mm. their hands dirty. <laughs> you know that there's a problem because, because you can't have too many people on the farms and then you say that is why you're getting more food. That is not it. If you have the machines, mm -hmm. there wouldn't even be space for a hundred people, a hundred people to go with their machines and do like a hundred hectares so, so where, in the so community. Where is the, where is the balance? Where is the level playing field? Uh, Bayer, you're welcome back. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. And actually, uh, Dr. Omar and I hear each other. Surprisingly, we couldn't hear the studio. <laughs> but it's good to be, to be back now, yes. Okay, so, so we're just, you know, bantering, as it were, like, okay, agriculture. Is it really the same thing when you say people have gone back to farming? Is it the same thing as boosting agriculture in, as a whole? So we were talking from two different sides of the coin. <laughs> <laughs> and he accused me of never having done farming. <laughs> I, okay. I, I think that, um, you know, for me, to be honest, I'm not a farmer either, but I have had the opportunity of traveling extensively across Nigeria. Maybe there are only two states I've not been to in Nigeria. And when I say that, I mean both in the cities and in the, in the rural parts of the state. Uh, and there is extensive agriculture, from what I can see, yeah. especially in the north. Uh, in the Middle Belt and in the north, there is extensive agriculture. But what I find, for example, in the north, I actually saw a lot of mechanized farming uh, and mass you know, uh, farmers. You know, when I say mass, I mean, they, they don't have a mechanized farming, but there are a lot of them working on the farms. Mm. But it would look like, uh, but Yanku, you are, you are, you've been a farmer, correct me if I'm wrong. It would look like part of the problems are uh, um, storage, yeah. storage, processing, transportation. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, Okay, it keeps breaking. You know, one other question I would like to ask is, at some point in our lives as Nigerians, agriculture was the in and out for us. I mean, we had the, pure, the ground up pyramids. Mm. We had everybody producing one particular thing that they were known for mm. from each region. Mm -hmm. And these things were being exported and it was, we were happy. Yeah. You know? Oh, well, at least our fathers were happy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my question would have been like, are we ever going to get to the point where we where we have all these other things that we feel like we have now all being the center of conversation today and still be able to proudly say that our agricultural sector is back and even better than what it used to be. Yeah, like Dr. Obas said, um, Dr. Obas said made a lot of, uh, a lot of um, good points there. But you, you see, at this time, like you said, if agriculture comes back, it's still here. It has not gone anywhere, anyway. But if it if it comes back, I know what you mean, and becomes better. That means we shouldn't see the granite pyramids anymore, mm. because granite That's why I said better than yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> because granite pyramids for me mm. is not development. It shows that there is no 
uh, good storage, like, like bio, bio said, said, and then there is no processing plant. Mm -hmm. How can you have so much granite being kept in a pyramid when they could be in, a, an, in an industry, in a mm -hmm. company that is processing it into granite oil or any other thing, or even as common as kuli kuli I think and all that? <laughs> so, I think that's why the, you know, we tagged this conversation, agricultural development, because mm -hmm. we're trying to move it to the future. Yeah. We're trying to get it yeah. uh, to be better because it, it's beyond just packing food for the future. There is so much attached to it right now. People make fossil fuels out of residues from agricultural processes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've not even gotten to that end of the conversation. Manu, that we don't even know how to do. <laughs> Fertilizers now, one of the fears that we have in Nigeria is that the Russia-Ukraine war will stop us from having fertilizer to plant crops when we could have had some things to recycle <laughs> to make fertilizer. Baya is back and there. we also have Dr. Uba on the line. Dr. Uba, you're welcome back. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, you know, we were having that conversation about, um, you know, um, agriculture and non-oil exports just before we had that interruption. But moving forward, we've had a couple of conversations in the studio already. And, you know, where we got to is how that uh, we, we still have a lot of things that are being exported today, most of them in raw form. Uh, like you said, the cocoa and all of them. Uh, but the question is, we used to have a very viable agricultural sector uh, where we exported a lot of things, raw materials, before we discovered oil. Do you think there's ever going to get to a time where we would say that our agricultural sector is back to what it used to be and even better than it used to be? And what will it take to get there? Um, I think the, the your statement uh, it was. I can I can speak to the question you just raised, even though I didn't get all that you said. First, it's possible to get where we are for an even better. Hmm. First, we need to also have an integrated planting, integrated uh, agricultural system where in both the states. The local governments and the national government, that's the federal government. Because what we have now is planning that are in silos, you know, where the federal government will say certain things without consultation and in agreement with the subnational government of the land. And you see hazard planning, hazard implementation, and all that, and waste stages that has occurred. So if first thing, First thing to do is to begin to have a plan, a creative plan on our agriculture. Shall go and uh, shove kind of agriculture. We need to move into mechanized and green agriculture. Green agriculture in the sense that we don't just bring the tractors to clear those things. Have a place where you still maintain the green nature of the places, having your trees and all that. But, but, uh, but also providing food and uh, 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 poultry and all those kinds of things are need to be. And as you did mention, and I said it in my introductory remarks also, we need to develop the capacity and the value chain. You know, we're able to process here before we export, because that is where the Money lies. And also in our packaging, also, because they find out that most of the things we export also that have been uh, exported. Let, let me give you an instance. Go to a, a, a typical market in uh, this country. See that we are still exposing meat, vegetables along the road with all the pollution that are not rest of people. And these are the same products that we want to export to other countries. How do you think they will? not where package process products. So we have a lot of post-harvest yield losses, which is over almost 60 percent. Produce and over 60 percent of what you produce are lost, are destroyed. They are not being stored, they are not being processed and all the rest of it. All. So we can get to that place, but it created planning and prioritization of agriculture and the ability to process 
big, big schools into semi secondary and tertiary products. Back, our manufacturing or even growth, our manufacturing sector, you know, to begin to do those kinds of things that we need to do to take us to the next level. Oh. Okay, uh, Dr. Oba, we would have loved to really continue this conversation. Bayo asked you a question that uh, we don't have time now to answer, but we hope that we are going to continue this conversation. I, I remember that he asked um, if you have had any insight to any um, uh, manifesto of the, of the presidential candidates and what you think um, is significantly addressing agriculture and how to develop it. But that would be something for another day because we've run out of time. We'd like to say thank you to you for coming on the program. Thank you. Thank so, you for uh, sorry for the interruptions that we had in the course of the discussion. OK. Uh, <laughs> um, Dr. Oba, mm. yeah. He has a positive outlook. He has. He has, he's optimistic that Which it can happen. Thing. Very good. It, he's optimistic that it can happen. And I think it can happen. And some, someone was, I watched a video today. In one of the African countries, a legislator got up and, and said she felt ashamed that the money that they were earning as legislators was more than <laughs> what some states <laughs> were, were budgeting and all that. And that they should... They should try to start from themselves, cut their um, their earnings and all that. I know show people that just left the group chats. Yeah. They are, they <laughs> so <laughs> someone now asked a question that, oh, someone now said, is it possible for Nigerian legislators to go and learn how to be patriotic, to borrow a leave? He used the word to borrow a leave. And an, a, re a response that came to that is that, don't mind them. Nigerian legislators don't need a leaf. They own the tree. Just that they don't <laughs> like the vegetables that come from the trees. Right. They know what to do. Uh, we will keep having these conversations. And of course, we're going to continue with these agricultural developments. But that would be sometime else in the week. But until then, we're going on a quick break. When we return, we're going to be having this conversation around presidential candidates avoiding presidential debates. Don't go anywhere. The run-up will return. Stay with us. Thank you.